Yeah, today's gonna be a quick video. We're not gonna be too long. We're gonna be in and out. But I just felt like this image was so powerful that it deserved its own video. So we're gonna get right into it. For those of y'all who are knowledgeable about the Haitian Revolution, I'm sure you heard about the Battle of Vitier and what happened the day after when the French general had to take the knee in front of Dessalines. He had to come through, get on his damn knees in front of the black man and acknowledge the authority of the black man. Now, this image has been around for centuries. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the old image. Take a look up on the screen. That image has been around for over 100 years, but the big homie a comics art, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, he gave us a modern rendition. He gave us a modern revision of that old painting. And considering it is Black History Month, we might as well jump straight into the history lesson. But before we get into that, man, let's just acknowledge, look, look at the big homie that's Celine, bro. Look at my man's armed guard. And yes, you already know we had the black woman with the sword on deck. She was, yeah, yeah. Many people don't know this, but Haitian men were the first men to integrate women into the armed forces in the Western Hemisphere. In the Western Hemisphere. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about back in Africa. We already know our brothers back in Africa was the first one to do that before anybody. In fact, it was an ancestral inheritance taken from them, so it was a natural progression. So, yes, Haitian women were the first women in the Western Hemisphere to be integrated into the armed forces way before the women in the United States. And also, back in 1990 was the first time a black woman was head of state. And that happened in Haiti also, so... I know we like to celebrate when we're the first black person to do something in a white space. Like it only matters if you're the first black president of the United States or the first black president of this company or the first black president of this university. And it doesn't hold the same weight when you do it in a black space, right? Like for example, when I said that the first black female head of state in the Western hemisphere was in Haiti. But for many of us, that doesn't hold the same prestige if we're not the first head of state of some white nation. So, you know, that's something personal within us that we gotta, you know, get our mind right. But it is what it is, man. But let's jump straight into it. The reason why this image is so powerful is not just because the French general was surrendering to the black man. No, it's way deeper than that. You have to understand the French general Rochambeau, the one that we see on the image surrendering. He is one of the most notorious, one of the most demonic, one of the most satanic white supremacists in the history of humanity. And you know me, I do not like to throw that word around on my channel. I never use that word on my channel. You never hear me say the words white supremacy. But when I say white supremacist, Rochambeau, top five white supremacists, and he had to get on his knees in front of the black man. Now, why do I call Rochambeau top five white supremacists? You see, nowadays, y'all throw that word around for anybody. Y'all call the random guy at your job a white supremacist. Y'all be calling Billy at the job a white supremacist. Meanwhile, he's just a regular citizen just like you. Now, the reason why I call Rochambeau a white supremacist is because if you dug him up from the grave right now and asked him if he was a white supremacist, he would tell you, you goddamn right. First of all, you gotta understand the reason why Rochambeau was called up to Haiti was because Napoleon Bonaparte's brother-in-law had passed away. That was the original, that was the first general that Napoleon had sent to Haiti. It was General Leclerc, and Leclerc was married to Napoleon's sister. Leclerc passed away, I believe, sometime in late 1802, and that was when Rochambeau was called up. Now, Rochambeau, straight demonic. I'm not gonna get too deep into it, but let's just say this. There are hundreds of skeletons at the bottom of the Caribbean Sea of black men and women because Rochambeau had drowned them in the sea, and many of these individuals had nothing to do with the war for example Rochambeau might capture a general and then he'll drown his whole family like his whole family his, his wife his kids his baby his, his grandma his uncle his everybody getting drowned in the sea that happened many times if you didn't get drowned in the sea you got eaten by dogs you got eaten by dogs in front of a crowd like the same way how during the Jim Crow era in the United States it would be a big event like we're gonna go lynch a negro it was the same thing during the Haitian Revolution we're gonna go down to the local theater and we're gonna go you know watch a negro get burned at the stake we're going to go down to the local theater and we're going to watch a Negro get eaten by dogs. And when I say Negro, I mean, this is a general term. It could be a black man. It could be a black woman. It could be a black boy. It could be a black girl. It could be a black elder. It didn't matter. During the Haitian Revolution, if you were above the age of six, regardless of your gender, you were seen as an enemy combatant. It was a war of extermination, meaning we got to wipe the entire island out. We have to wipe these Negroes out and we have to import a new batch into the island so we can restart the plantation system. Because this old batch of Negroes, they done gone bad. They revolted. <laughs> it's a bad batch. And one major event that Rochambeau was famous for is he had invited the Haitian women to a, to a ball, to a party, some type of event. And what the Haitian women did not know was that earlier in the day Rochambeau had captured their husbands in battle and had them executed and decapitated and during the event he invited the women over and I believe during the festivities he had taken them to this private room and then he showed them the decapitated heads of their husbands. Now keep in mind I just want to specify the women he had invited to this event were the upper class mixed race women and these were their mixed race Haitian husbands but for some reason Rochambeau he had more of a hatred in his heart for the mixed race population even more 
than the Negro population. I don't know why. You got to ask him that. You got to ask him that. He had a personal bone to pick when it came to the mixed race population. He really did not like them at all. And that was partially the reason why the black and slave population and the mixed race population had united towards the end of the war because Rochambeau, Rochambeau had no love in his heart when it came to the mixed race population. And once the mixed race brothers understood that they were not going to be accepted by the French because Rochambeau had completely rejected them, that's what kind of brought them back to the brothers back to the black population and that's why towards the end you seen mixed race brothers like general alexander pichon and desaline coming together as one against the enemy because the mixed race brothers seen that it wasn't just the black population that was getting lynched and getting drowned in the sea they were also being targeted for violence rochambeau like i said top five white supremacists bro he don't even got love for the mixed race brothers but anyways man let's jump straight into the history lesson if you take a look up on the screen the Battle of Vetier was the last major battle of the Haitian Revolution and the final part of the revolution under Jean-Jacques Dessalines. It was fought on the 18th of November 1803 between the indigenous Haitian army and Napoleon's French expeditionary forces who were committed to regaining control of the island. Now we're going to get into some quick history behind the character Rochambeau. Born on the 7th of April 1755, Rochambeau was a French military commander. He was the son of Jean-Baptiste Donation de Vimeur Comte de Rochambeau. I'm assuming his father was also a high-ranking French government official or military commander. I'm sure it runs in the family. Anyways, let's continue. He served in the American Revolutionary War, was an aide-de-camp to his father, exactly, spending the winter of 1781 to 1782 in quarters of Williamsburg, Virginia. In the 1790s, he participated in an unsuccessful campaign to establish French authority in Martinique and Haiti. In 1802, he was appointed to lead an expeditionary force against Haiti after General Charles Leclerc's death. His remit was to restore French control of their rebellious colony by any means. Historians of the Haitian Revolution credit his brutal tactics for uniting blacks and Jean de Couleur, soldiers against the French. Exactly. Like I said, the blacks and the mixed race population came together because, like I said, Rochambeau, top five white supremacists to ever touch the soil of the earth, bro. Top five. Y'all be talking about white supremacists in the modern day. Y'all be acting like the white dude that's a garbage man picking up the trash every Tuesday and Thursday is a white supremacist. Y'all don't know white supremacy, bro. Y'all don't know. Y'all don't know, man. Y'all don't know. Anyways, man, let's get back into it. After Rochambeau surrendered to the rebel general Jean-Jacques Dessalines in November 1803, the former French colony declared its independence as Haiti, the second independent state in the Americas. In the process, Dessalines became arguably the most successful military commander in the struggle against Napoleonic France. Now, why is that phrase significant? Why is that sentence important? Many European historians regard Napoleon Bonaparte as one of the greatest, if not the greatest, European general to ever walk the earth. Yet, it was two black men that he could not defeat. Two black men who made him take the knee. Two black men who he can never touch. And those men go by the names General Jean-Jacques Dessalines and King Henry Christophe. So, at the end of the day, man, at the end of the day, your greatest general of all time had to take the knee. And he had to kiss the ring. <laughs> it is what it is, man. Let's get back into it. At the surrender of Cap Francais, Rochambeau was captured aboard the frigate surveillance by a British squadron under the command of Captain John Loring and returned to England as a prisoner on parole where he remained interned for almost nine years. Bitch ass nigga. Now, now you understand why I said this image is the most powerful image that I've ever seen, right? I know a lot of y'all think Donald Trump is this big bad Klansman, but bro, Rochambeau makes Donald Trump look like little Nas X. Many of y'all don't understand the levels of true white supremacy that our forefathers had to face head on, had to go up against head on. Y'all really don't understand because y'all be throwing that word around like it don't even mean nothing anymore. And to be honest, that's why a lot of people don't even take that word seriously. Going back to that video that I dropped on Tariq Nasheed the other day, when he said that the so-called white supremacists control the air and the stars and the moon and the universe, things like that. Ask yourself, do we have anybody walking around today like Rochambeau? Honestly, do we have whole entire families getting drowned in the sea, burned at the stake, hung from a tree, eaten by dogs? Like, no, no nobody's doing that in the modern day. Compared to our forefathers, we live a generally peaceful existence. And even though they had way more powerful forces coming up against them, our forefathers never believed that the white supremacists controlled the entire universe, controlled the air and the sea and the oxygen and the hydrogen. They never believed that. And that's why I had to come down so hard on Tariq Nasheed the other day, man. Like, I can't believe he said that, man. But anyways, I don't want to get off topic. Before we get up out of here, do y'all see Dessaline's wife? Do y'all see the Empress of Haiti right by his side? Do you see my Claire and Woods, Felicité, Dessaline? Do you see? Bro, bro. That's why I say when I can only marry a black woman, it's not on some Dr. Umar Johnson type of vibe, bro. I'm telling you, it's a personal thing, bro. It's a personal thing. In fact, before we get up out of here, we might as well jump into the history lesson regarding her background as well because she's also somebody who gets overlooked. Take a look up on the screen. Empress Marie Claire was Felicite Bonheur, Empress of Haiti. Born in 1758, was the Empress of Haiti from 1804 to 1806 as the spouse of Jean-Jacques Dessalines, Empress Consort of Haiti. Hey man, that was a fly-ass title. 
She was born in Leogan to a poor but free family as the daughter of Guillaume Bonheur and Marie Saint Lobelot. She was educated by her aunt Elise Lobelot, who was the governess of a religious order. She married Pierre Lunic, Master Cartwright, to the brothers of Saint Jean de Dieu. She became a widow in 1795. So, yeah, she had a first husband. He passed away in 1795. Now, keep in mind, 1795, the war is going on right now. So, the war popped off 1791, ended 1804. So, 1795, she became a widow. And during the 1790s, as we know, Dessaline, big boss, big general on the island. So, Dessaline, he was a player. Dessaline was a player. He was known as a player. He had a girl in every commune, every city, every district, every province. He was that dude. Dessaline was that dude. Let's get back into it. During the siege of Jacques Mel in 1800, she made herself a name for her work for the wounded and starving. She managed to convince Dessaline, who was one of the parties besieging the city, to allow some roads to the city to be open so that the wounded in the city could receive help. She led a procession of women and children with food, clothes, and medicine back to the city and then arranged for the food to be cooked on the streets. That's a story that's been passed down for generations from generations. And now if you ask me how that went about, it's simple. That was his girl, bro. That was his woman. That was one of his women. So they make it seem like my Claire Woods was just some random woman off the street that convinced Dessaline like, oh, this big army of men came to besiege the city. And then she just convinced Dessaline to allow the roads to be open. No, that was his girl. That was his girl. So his girl came to him. It was like, baby, you know, come on, let's let's feed the people. And then, you know, Dessaline, he like, all right, whatever, whatever. All right. You know, going back to what I said about Dessaline being a player, I wasn't speaking in terms of him running through women. How y'all do? No, I'm not talking about the modern day sense. Dessaline, his women that was down with his team, they were advancing the war effort meaning they acted as spies. Dessaline had women on his team from the high ranking elite mixed race women down to the prostitutes who were servicing the French soldiers, down to the women who sold food on the streets, down to the nurses that was helping the wounded soldiers. Dessaline had networks of women all over the island that would keep him up to date and abreast of what's happening and what's going on, who's saying what. You gotta understand the black women of that time during the Haitian Revolution, they were riding for the black man, bro. They were riding for the black man. They were, they were willing to die for the black man. That's why I always big up those women, bro. That's why I always big up those women. Now, let's get back into it. Take a look up on the screen. Life with Dessaline. On the 2nd of April, 1800, she married Jean-Jacques Dessaline, with whom she had a long-time relationship. They had seven children. Now, keep in mind, like I said, remember, I told you, Dessaline was a player. So, he had a lot of kids on the island. Nobody really knows how many kids he had. You can't really put a number on it, to be honest. But when he married Marie-Claire Felicité, she didn't really have no problem with the fact that he had a lot of women, he had a lot of children. She accepted his children from different women as her own. Like she didn't have a problem with that, right? So that's why you see on this list, some of the children are born in the same year. That doesn't mean that those are her children. That might be children that he's had with other women that they claimed as their own together under the new marriage. So let's jump straight into it. The first child, Princess Marie Francoise Selimène de Saline, born October 1789. She never married, but she had a daughter with Captain Bernard Chancy. Second child, Albert Dessaline, died young before 1804. Prince Jacques Bienaimé Dessaline, born 1793. He never married, but he had one daughter by Adelaide Apollon. Princess Celestine Dessaline, born 1793, twin with her brother Jacques. She got married at Cap Henry, 1817. Now, keep in mind, Cap Henry was the capital city of the Kingdom of Haiti. The Kingdom of Haiti was controlled by King Henry Christophe. 1817, King Henry Christophe was still in power. So she was a high ranking member of the Kingdom of Haiti. There were many of Dessaline's children who pledged allegiance to the Kingdom of Haiti under the regime of King Henry Christophe. In fact, if you go to my playlist section and you go to a series I made called Newspapers from the Haitian Revolution, I dug up a news article from over 200 years ago. I believe the video was entitled The Queen of Haiti's Birthday Celebration in 1816. And one of Dessaline's children gave a speech to the Queen of Haiti. So go check that out after this one. Anyways, let's get back into it. Now, where were we? Yes. Princess Jean-Sophie Dessaline, born 1799. She got married to a gentleman by the name of Cazenave. Next child, Louis Dessaline, died young before 1804. And finally, we got Princess Céline Dessaline. I believe the last three children were between her and Dessaline. Princess Jean-Sophie and Louis Dessaline and Princess Céline Dessaline. Now, if you take a look up on the screen, my Claire was described as kind, merciful, and natural with an elegant and cordial manner. She adopted the numerous children produced by Dessaline's adulterous affairs. Man, why they hating on my man on the Wikipedia, man? When they say adulterous affairs, they make it sound so demonic. When in reality, the women were throwing it at Dessaline. You got to understand, the French have been 
holding complete dominance over the island over 200 years, damn near 300 years. And here comes this black man at the head of his troops, destroying the French army on every occasion. Bro, it was something the black women of that time they never seen before. They couldn't believe it. They couldn't believe it. So of course, of course, Dessaline had a lot of women on the team, man. It makes sense. Anyways, man, let's get back into it. She was a contrast to her husband in her tolerance and support and by showing indiscriminate kindness to people of all colors. She was a great opponent of Dessaline's policy toward the white French people of Haiti. She saw the needs of the prisoners and she did not hesitate, despite her husband's anger, to save many of them from battle wounds suffered during the Revolutionary War. She is reported to have fallen to her knees before Dessaline to beg him to spare their lives and is said to have hidden one of them, Decoutil, under her own bed to save him. She was made Empress of Haiti in 1804 upon the creation of the monarchy of Haiti and crowned with her husband at the church of Sean Mas on the 8th of October, 1804. Now, you got to understand, Empress Michael Felicité, she was she was a lover. She wasn't a fighter. You know what I mean? Dessaline, he was a gangster. Dessaline was a gangster. But see, she wasn't, she wasn't into that. She was a nurse. She was a chef. She was a mother. She was very feminine. And Dessaline was the complete contrast, obviously. Maximum masculinity. And I forget the story, but when they said that she hid that white Frenchman under the bed, I believe that there was a rumor. A rumor had started that this white doctor, the name was Decoutil. They said that in the paragraph. This white doctor by the name of Decoutil. A rumor had started that he tried to poison Dessaline. So Dessaline was looking for this dude. You know what I mean? We got to kill him. It is what it is. Like, we got we to gotta find him. We got to shoot him. And the reason why she helped to save his life was, number one, he was a doctor. He was a doctor. At that time, you needed that expertise. That was one of the populations of white French people that, that were spared during the war. So in my opinion, she was simply thinking logically. She was being pragmatic at the time, whereas Dessaline flying off the handle, ready to kill him. Like they said earlier, she was the sharp contrast. She was the feminine contrast to the masculine energy of Dessaline, which is natural. That's how it goes, bro. That's how it goes. When you look at the wives of all the generals, King Henry Christophe's wife, Maya Louise Quadavid, very feminine. Toussaint Louverture's wife, Suzanne, very feminine. That's Celine's wife, My Claire Felicité, very feminine. Now, that wasn't the case for all of them though. As you can even see upon the painting, you see one of Desaline's armed guards is a female. And I don't want to say nothing, but he was probably smashing as well. But I say that to say this, not every one of the girlfriends or the wives were just feminine. And you know, some of them, they were ready to get on the battlefield. As you know, General Charles Belair, his wife, Sanit Belair, they were executed together in 1802 by the French army. His wife was fighting side by side with him on the battlefield. Remember, General Lamartiniere, his wife, Marie Jeanne Lamartiniere, fighting right beside, right beside him on the battlefield. And I say that to say, not every wife or girlfriend was just, you know, feminine and just playing the background. Nah, some of them was getting on the battlefield, grabbing a sword, grabbing a gun, grabbing a musket, grabbing a cannon, and they was blowing them white boys' head off. I just had to make the clarification, just so y'all know. But anyways, man, I just want to give a big shout out to the homie, a comics art, for this legendary piece of work legendary piece of work i'm telling you i'm telling you i'm gonna have my crib full of this dude's paintings bro i'm telling you my crib gonna be full of this dude's work i love this dude's work so much bro talented brother man talented brother you know on my channel i gotta show love to the brothers who don't get the recognition and the spotlight and the acknowledgement that i feel they deserve so in summary this painting is fire and yeah man it is what it is it's your boy nefakari desaline back in the building yes indeed like share subscribe cash app in the description and i'm gone peace Reincarnated, I'm back in the original fashion. I left on a horse and came back in that ass. And I left with abundance and came back to famine. We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping. Look how the mighty have fallen. Used to be running, now we be walking. When you be cooning, that's when they applauded. Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter. Gotta come up in this shoot. They stuck in the mix. Really, my heart would be breaking. That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business. Pass it down in generation. Talking about money and power and building a nation. That's a deadly combination. Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genus. Falsifying information. No, they got mad. Intentions. Step in the room and I'm feeling attention. Enemy watching me, blocking my vision. Get for the check, cause I need my redemption. Building my kingdom, I need it protected. Ready for war like a young Monte Congo. Never decided the team is the motto. Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles. Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato. I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain and make it ambition. I'm blessed by the gods, but I ain't religious. I came for the power, they came for the bitch. They make a no hourly wage. I got business. This shit is an art and they can never be taught. Selling my soul, I can never be bought. Play with my money, I see you in court. Run to the check and I do it for sport, Babylon falling, I go to the source, packing my luggage and go overseas, shorty be with me and she so elite, shorty be charged that I'm calling her Hershey, secret intelligence probably gon' murder me, don't fuck with brands cause nigga I'm Haitian, say the wrong shit and you're smacking their faces.